How are you? Good to see you all this morning. I better compliment you or you'll be wishing that Gary was back. You all look so good this morning. I was tuned in at the beginning just to make sure you showed up last week without me and you were here. So let's say thank you to Gary for the wonderful job he did last week. Grateful to have you all here and grateful especially to a special family at the back there this morning. We welcome the Bartons to this place this morning and, uh, and we have a visitation for Fern tomorrow from 2 to 5 and from 7 to 9. The funeral is by invitation, but I think most of you have received your invitations. Uh, Betty is on the case, I think. Yeah, and so because of our COVID restrictions, just like the dear queen yesterday observing in her pandemic, um, the restrictions that we have, uh, we have to limit who's in the space all at once. Um, and then we'll be monitoring that in visitation too, just making sure at the door that we only have 100 in the building at a time, but everybody will be flowing through that time instead of all at once. So welcome here and thank you for being here this morning. It's so nice to see you. So nice to see you. So I'll take a deep breath. It's been a hard week. We also lost Ross Horn this week as well. So Ross passed away in the early hours of Thursday morning. I was there to visit their family um, yesterday, I think. Yesterday I was, I was there to see them, and we'll be doing a private memorial at their home on Thursday evening and then a graveside service at a later date, of course, because Kim and Marga are away. They can't be here for that, so we'll wait for that at that time. Um, do you have announcements this morning? I know you have announcements. I'm going to put somebody on the spot first. Can you wave, Dennis? This is my Dennis. You all saw him play for me at one time before. He's in my bubble, and that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> Dennis has been my dear friend for eight years. Yeah, and now he's more than that. So I'm, I'm happy, just so you know. <laughs> Glad you're here. <laughs> oh! <laughs> It's not funny Sunday again. Uh, oh, you got to turn your mic on. How are we doing? Uh -huh. There you there are. There we go. Now we're on. Thanks, May. The back to the church. Back to the church. Back to the building committee are going to have a short, short five-minute meeting right after here. So if you can hang around. And if Reverend Kim could just spare five minutes, maybe she could be part of that. Mm -hmm. I can try. I got to get to Nine Mile today for the first time. Yeah, well. Yes, in a while, but I will try for sure. They would appreciate that too. Yeah, no problem. Um, we're looking for some uh, people to help with parking um, for the next couple of days. And I'll give you uh, Monday from 10, or from 1 to 4.30, and Tuesday from 12.30 to 2.00. If you can help with that, could you contact Murray? Murray's right there. Uh, and if uh, you know someone that might want to do it, you can call Murray at 883-8138. Um, that's the paper ones. Now the ones from my memory. Uh, there's an executive meeting this week. Uh, the meeting starts at 7.30. There's a grounding session before that from 7 to 7.30. So if you want to come to the meeting, by all means, come. Drop in. We'd love to have you there. Uh, the big thing, we had our turkey takeout supper yesterday. Um, I have to say, we have an amazing, just an amazing setup when we do this. The people that are involved with it are just out of this world. I want to thank all the people that came on Friday and did all the preparation work. I want to thank all those that worked yesterday uh, to do all the things that had to be done. Uh, you did a fantastic job, and I want to thank the people that put the money out to buy all the goods to do this. So we ended up, now I should qualify this a little bit. We had to buy 24 turkeys to do this one and the next one, so it's a little bit extra cost there. So we ended up clearing $2,169.
And again, thanks to all the people that did all the hard work, and thanks to all the people that bought all those great meals. So thank you very much. Thanks, Gary. In our um, time when we normally do the Minute for Mission this morning, we're going back to one more Call to Be the Church video that we started before Lent. Do you remember those? They were a stewardship campaign videos. I was in contact with Roger Janes, who is the national representative from uh, the stewards' uh, lineage, mission and service, and all of that from uh, the United Church of Canada, and he wanted to know if we would be interested in doing the module with him. It's over, I think it's six weeks, it's free, it's on Zoom, and uh, it would be myself and three other people. So you don't have to be a steward, but if you're a steward, that's great. Um, but it's thinking about stewardship in a new way, and as part of that, you'll see in the newsletter I sent out yesterday all the information about this. Um, but there's a free analysis on our stewardship, uh, what we've been doing, what we could be doing, all that kind of stuff. And so it's a commitment of uh, two hours on Wednesday mornings uh, starting, uh, I think, in the middle, middle of May or so, but you'll get more information. If you're interested, uh, please let me know as soon as possible, and we'll get you all set up uh, on Zoom, make sure all that is working, and um, it should be a really good uh, experience to go through that and just think about our our stewardship here at the church, which is more than just fundraising. Fundraising is an amazing part of it, uh, but there's more. There's more to being disciples in our stewardship in the church, and so we're looking forward to seeing what the national church is leading us in that. So let us take some time to acknowledge this place where we live and we work and we worship. We pause and remember that in this region, we are on lands that are the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. May we live with respect on this land. Oh, I forgot a part. No, I didn't. Is the is acknowledgement a place in there? Maybe I forgot to add the slide. Oh, I forgot to add the slide. Oh. So I'm going to say this first because this is where it's supposed to be. Do you remember? Repeat after me. May we live with respect in this land. Oh, they know it. Not, there's some people here that might not know it, so let's do it this way. Repeat after me. May we live with respect on this land and live in peace and friendship with its people. This next part is Mi'kmaq, so don't try and think that you don't know what I'm saying, but it's Umsit. Nogama, which means all my relations. We are all treaty people. So now we light the Christ candle. Sorry about that, Debbie. I always got to leave you with something to scramble. You know, you have to earn your, earn your pay. So I invite you to rise as we light our Christ candle this morning, um, reminding us of the light of Christ that's always with us, not inviting that light here. That light is here. This light reminds us and serves as a symbol during our worship today. As I light the candle, let's say together our new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the Word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life, in death, in life beyond death. God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. As you remain standing, let's do our call to worship together. Peace be with you. Come and see the love God has given to us. Come with hope that Christ's presence is real. Let us pray. Miraculous God, come to us now, even as your Son came to those first disciples on the shores of Galilee. Speak your peace to our hearts. Touch us with your Holy Spirit. Reveal your word that we may hear your message this day and live as your disciples in the days and years to come. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 
You can be seated. Our first hymn is, I've picked all familiar ones today. Um, It's O for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. interesting to see these videos come out with um, choirs that are four and three people. You saw that yesterday again at the funeral for Prince Philip, too, where there was just four in a choir. It's a time in our worship where we take a moment to turn our faces back to God. It's an invitation to confession, and it's not to confess that you're anything less than human. God is always there for us, waiting for us to turn our lives back to the God who always loves us, not because we're bad people who do bad things, but because we're human beings that make mistakes. Let us pray. God, you have told us to trust in you with all our hearts. You have told us not to lean on our own understanding. And so we try to trust but we get very nervous when we don't understand. We don't understand what you meant by, this bread is my body, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. We don't understand who will betray us, or why, or what that will mean for us. We don't understand how death is a victory. We don't understand post-resurrection life, yours or ours. We don't understand why you ask us to stay here, and we're afraid we will somehow miss the power when it comes down from on high. Let's take a moment to silently offer prayers to God. Offering prayers for words not spoken, words spoken and regretted, things done and things not done. Amen. My friend, God hears our prayers, both spoken and those within the deepest corners of our hearts that we may not even have thought of today. Jesus is gentle with our doubts. The Spirit offers us peace in the midst of our lack of understanding. The one who created us leads us step by step into deeper trust. Together we say, thanks be to God. Amen. I'm going to invite Murray to come forward, and, uh, and then I'll pray a prayer of illumination before our reading of Scripture. I realize now that I see it on the big screen that the pink was not a good color to you, so I'll use something brighter next week so you can see the words that I'm reading and follow along more clearly. See what happens when I take a week off? It just all falls apart. 
Let us pray. Jesus, our guide, you explain the scriptures and reveal yourself to the disciples at Emmaus. Now by your spirit, enlighten our minds to understand their witness and ignite our hearts to receive you at the table. Amen. Good morning. This morning's reading is Acts 3, verses 12 to 19. Peter saw it. He addressed the people. You Israelites, why do you wonder at this? Or why do you state at us? And though by our own power or piety we had made him walk, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob, the God of our ancestors has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and rejected in the presence of Pilate. Though he had decided to release him, but you rejected the Holy Righteous One and asked to have a murderer given to you, and you killed the author of life, whom God raised from the dead. To this we are witnesses. And by faith in his name, his name itself has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given him this perfect help in the presence of all of you. And now, friends, know that you acted in ignorance, as did also your rulers. In this way, God fulfilled what he had foretold through all the prophets, that his Messiah would suffer. Repent, therefore, and turn to God, so that your sins may be wiped out. verses 36 to 48. Suddenly Jesus appeared, standing among his gathered followers. Greetings, he said. Please, peace be with you. Taken by surprise, they thought he was a ghost and were scared spitless. Jesus said to them, What have you got to be afraid of? Why are you letting your doubts get the better of you? Here, take a look at my hands and feet. See for yourselves that it is really me. Reach out and touch me, and you will know that I am a flesh and bone. No ghost can claim that. As he spoke, he showed them his hands and feet. It all seemed too good to be true. So wonderful, they couldn't believe their eyes. Their heads were bursting with joy and disbelief. Jesus asked them, Have you got anything here I can eat? So they gave him a piece of grilled fish, and he took it, and he ate it in front of them. Then he said to them, The things I have said while I was with you amount to this. Everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms is to be fulfilled. As he spoke, they began to see how the scriptures, how to read the scriptures with open minds so as to understand what God was saying to them. Jesus said to them, What was written will now be clear to you, that the Messiah is to suffer and then rise from the dead on the third day. It was also written that the people, every nation, must be told of the Messiah's call to turn their lives around and receive forgiveness for sin. You can get get started here in Jerusalem. You have witnessed these things firsthand, so you can tell everyone what you have seen and heard. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Murray. We have special music, and it's Breathe On Me, Breath of God. Until my heart is pure Un- 
until my will is one with yours to do and to endure. Breathe on me, breath of God, so shall I never life of thine eternity you pray with me? Holy One, let the words that I speak reach the hearts that need to hear them. Let the thoughts I share inspire us all to think on you when we go from this place. And God, in this place, may we feel your presence. May we know that you are real. May we know that we are loved. Amen. So you might be wondering why we're still caught up in the Easter story, why we're still telling this story. That's the foundation of our faith. And today is actually, Easter just began on Easter Sunday. Did you know that? Some of you do. So today is called Easter 3. It's the third Sunday in Easter. Do you know how many Sundays there are in Easter? Seven. It's like seven weeks of Easter. So we think Easter time is the time before Easter, which we call Lent, right? Lent leading up to. But now is the time, this is the space that we talk about the story of the resurrection. It's the time that we talk about the time from when Jesus died and then when Jesus rose again, and he appeared to his people. So before uh, ascension, when he makes his way back up wherever he's going, we have this time where he's appeared to people, and he's telling them stories, and he's, he's giving them all kinds of information, and kind of letting them know that, remember when I told you that thing? Here it is. This is what we were talking about. I am the fulfillment of the scriptures. So now let me read the sermon I actually wrote. The scriptures that we are exploring today are taken from the Gospel of Luke and the book of Acts, both written by the same writer, sometimes called actually Luke Acts. We don't know who that writer is, but some speculate that this was a person that was present at the time of some of these things happening. Either way, they, they kind of have a connection in there. Did you hear the, the part where it said, we, you are all witnesses? You are all witnesses to this, as we are all witnesses to this story. And so thinking about the story of Jesus, thinking about his life, his death, his resurrection, how does that affect our faith? How does that shape us as believers? So in the reading of Acts that we read first, thank you, Murray, we join the story kind of right in the middle of it, and it doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you don't know what's happening in the story. You're like, who is he talking to? Why, why, are, why is he admonishing these people for no good reason? So what's happened is the, the people have gathered up this, this man every day, and they bring him to what's called the beautiful gate outside the temple in Jerusalem. They lay him down because it said he was lame from birth. They lay him down. He begs for alms all day. They pick him up. They take him home at the end of the day. The man has never walked. All he does is reach out and beg. So that's where we find them in the story today. So he's laying there when Peter and John walk by. And when Peter and John walk by, he does what he does. He reaches his hand down. And Peter takes his hand and he says to him, I'm sorry, I don't have any money. But what I can offer you, I can offer in the name of Jesus Christ. 
stand up and walk. And so the man stands up. Not only walks, but runs with them into the temple, leaping for joy, praising God. And all of the people present in the temple are amazed. They're quite shocked, in fact, because this is the same guy who every day of his life has been laying outside the beautiful gate of the temple begging. And now he's running around and leaping for joy. And so they are talking about Peter and John and the miraculous powers they must have and these guys as these awesome healers. And that's where we join the story today. And Peter says, "Uh uh-uh. Don't forget so quick where our power comes from. Don't forget, it's not me, it's not John, that's not who is doing the healing here. Did you hear what I said? He said the name of Jesus. The fulfillment of the prophecies of all the people, the power of God and all of their ancestors is found in the story of Jesus. And this man who laid outside of the temple every single day heard these stories. And when he is offered something in the name of Jesus, healing in the name of Jesus, he understands it. And he gets up. Peter says to them, you know the story too. Why are you not catching on to this? You have all been witnesses to it. You even were witnesses to us putting him forward to a state-sanctioned death by the Romans. Now, I want you to hear something, because it's really important. Sometimes passages like this, where he says, all of you sent him to die, kind of shed some bad light on the Jewish people. But we must understand here that it's Peter admonishing all the people present, including and maybe especially himself, if he's honest. The crowd that gather there are not necessarily the same crowd that shouted, crucify him, crucify him. But all present in the temple that day know the story. By now, the word has spread about Jesus, about the story, about him raising from the dead, about all the things that have been happening. This happened in their time. So everyone there was directly or indirectly responsible for the death of Jesus Christ, even Peter, especially Peter maybe. Do you remember what Peter did on the night that Jesus was arrested? He denied him three times. He denied him three times, and he ran away. He was not there at the crucifixion. His good buddy Peter was not standing at his side, was not fighting against the Romans to get him down off the cross, was not saying, look, this is who this is. How dare you kill the Son of Man? No, he was where? Hiding in the upper room. Peter denied his teacher and his friend. But in the book of Acts, we find him now saying who Jesus is, healing in the name of Jesus. And so that's where the gospel story becomes important today. Because you're like, well, I'm like, how did he go from like, I don't know the guy, to like, stand up and walk in his name? Like, how did that happen? So the gospel tells us that this morning. So Even though we read the book of Acts first as our first reading this morning, the context comes from the Gospel of John, which are the events that happen before the Acts of the Apostles. Okay? So we have the Gospel of John. Nope, Luke. We're in Luke. The Gospel of Luke. And we come to this story where Peter and John are probably among the 11 in the upper room. So there's more to the story before what we read today. So let me catch you up. Did you read the story of the road to Emmaus last week? You did? Okay. No, you didn't. Okay. So um, let me catch you up then. On last week's episode, we find Cleopas and another traveler, we don't, he's unnamed, traveling on the road from Emmaus to Jerusalem. 
And they're talking about the events that have happened in, in Jerusalem. They're talking about the crucifixion. They're talking about uh, Mary and uh, Mother Mary coming and finding the tomb empty. They're talking about how the women ran and told the disciples. And then they're talking about how some of them came back and found the like They're talking about all this stuff. And then all of a sudden, a stranger joins them on the road. And the stranger joins them on the road and says, Hey, guys, what are you talking about? And they're like, where have you been? And so they start to tell him the story about everything I just mentioned. I'm not going to go over it again. You've heard it, I think. And so he tells them this story, and then Jesus says to them something that's really quite profound. Let me see if I can find it in the sermon that I'm not paying attention to this morning. (laughs) That happens sometimes. So we hear him say to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe that all the prophets have declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? Because they're talking about this story that they they never heard it before, that they were surprised by it. Then, beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. They don't realize who is with them, though, until they reach the beach and they break bread. And in that moment when they break bread, what we call communion, like he did with them in the the Last Supper, they see him for who he is. Until that moment, their eyes don't know who he is. And just when that happens, when they notice him, when they see him for who he is, he disappears. So they go and find the 11, probably still in the upper room, and that's where our story joined us this morning. So we're all caught up. So they're standing in the the upper room, Cleopas and this other unknown traveler, and telling this man appeared on the road. We didn't know him. We didn't know it was Jesus. And then all of a sudden, he revealed to us in the scriptures things we never understood before. We know who he is now. Let us tell you about it. And all of a sudden, it's Jesus again. Hi, guys. So as they're telling this unbelievable story, there are those present who walked the road with Jesus that are still clearly in doubt. They're afraid. They're confused. They think they're seeing a ghost, and that's pretty scary. And so Jesus says, no, come. It's okay. I know you're afraid. I know you have fears and you have doubts, but touch my hands. Touch my feet. It's me. And then after they do those things, he says to them, just, you know, to add measure, because ghosts don't eat food. I guess they knew that too. He says, hey, you got something to eat? And he eats with them. So not only are these the followers who walk with him in life, who accepted his death, who received the news that he lives again. But now they have heard him say in this moment, you are witnesses to these things. He understands their fears and their doubts, and then he patiently helps them understand even a little bit more. They have become witness to the fulfillment of the prophecy, to the power of God revealed in Jesus. And because of all of this, we are able and they were able to turn their lives to God. The reading says, and because of all this, the repentance and forgiveness of sins, which I will say is the turning back to God's way and the reconciliation of broken relationships between each other and God, is proclaimed in Christ's name. And he says, start where you are. Start here in Jerusalem. He doesn't automatically give them the big job and send them out into the world. He says, start here. And in fact, they start actually in that room. They start with one another. And you know, we want to believe in all this business so badly. 
Yet we are human beings with fears and doubts, just like the disciples. It's really good to hear that Jesus didn't say, how dare you not believe what I'm telling you, and just expect them to believe him. He had the patience to say, come and touch, come and see, eat with me. Let's have a conversation. Let's be in relationship with each other. Let's get to know one another. He invites them to read scripture together and try to understand the story now based on what they know about his life. This is what he asks of us this day too. Our doubts and our fears do not keep us from the love of God revealed through Jesus. Jesus calls us to live as he lived. And Jesus, just as when we lit the candle this morning, we believe is inside each and every one of us. Christ said, I will live in you and you will live in me. Christ is here within each and every one of us, and because he lives in us, he calls us to touch one another with safe pandemic rules in place. To eat with one another, to love one another, to share with one another, to tell the stories with one another to talk about how our faith has affected our lives, how it touches us deeply and allows us to have the strength to carry on. It teaches us that endings are not the end, that there's more to come. To tell these things, to give hope to one another. That's how we turn our lives back to God. And it's made possible through the story of our faith, this fantastical story that's super hard to believe. Jesus came to show us the way, and we are all witnesses to the whole story. Like the lame man that walked in the name of Jesus, we're called to suspend our belief. That's so hard, to suspend our belief, because as human beings, reason, logic, is what makes sense to us. How can we believe in something so outrageous? But that's what makes it faith. Faith is belief in spite of doubt. It's what allowed the man who had never walked to jump up and leap for joy and dance in the name of Jesus. We are called to have that same faith in spite of our doubt. I sometimes say that doubt is my spiritual practice. I doubt and doubt and doubt and skeptic all day long, and it makes me dig deeper, not run further away. Belief in spite of doubt is faith. So today we get to choose. We get to choose if we are going to turn our lives to God after the whispers or after the hallelujahs of Easter have turned into whispers. You know, when when all the big celebration is over in these weeks that are passing by and we've said, we believe Christ is risen, Christ is risen indeed, and just say the words, now is our time to go, What does that mean for our lives? If we believe that Christ lives in us, then Christ is within us, and Christ lives and is risen inside each and every one of us, calling us to turn our lives to God who teaches us to love, to care, and to take care of one another. So today, that's where we start. Just like those 11 in the upper room, called to start here, among each other, to read scripture, to tell the stories, to tell your friends and your family, just about love, because that is the message. And together, I know we can. And Peter and John went together, didn't they? They didn't do it alone. And that's what we're called to do, too. Together, we can do that. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen? Amen. Now is a time where Martha plays music for reflection. Let's take a couple of deep breaths. We'll just sit in a moment of silence.
I'm curious. Did a song come up for you? If it did, shout it out. In a bulb there is a flower. Any other ones? Oh, Maggie's telling me, get in front of the camera. Yeah, beautiful. So we're going to watch our Called to Be the Church video right now. Um, These are a series of videos that are put out about stewardship from the United Church of Canada. Um, We sometimes play a Minute for Mission video in this time or tell a Minute for Mission story. This is our last Called to Be the Church video that we'll see today. And if it sparks your interest in um, what discipleship as stewardship looks like, um, please give me an email and uh, we'll get started on that journey together. I give to show gratitude. have it to give. Our time. Our gifts. Our skills. Our passion. And our money. In other words, all of ourselves. I give to live God's mission, to follow Jesus, to heal the world. Join me today. It's in my heart to give. It's part of my faith to give. It's in my nature to give. It's in my pocket to give. I give to show gratitude. I give to follow Jesus. It's part of my faith to give. So that video serves as that video serves as a um, an example of how to give. So those kids gave of their time to talk about giving. They put a video together um, to serve, and there's so many ways we've come up with thinking of different ways that we can serve and give to the community. Um, we have a food box that we're thinking about putting on the corner, um, and there's so many more projects that we could be working on and thinking about together with the whole community in mind, not just the four walls within our church, thinking about giving back. So um, it is the time that we invite you to offering. We invite you to offer of your time and your talent and particularly of your treasures in this time. Um, If you are donating um, here in the church, we have a offering plate at the back of the church and one at the side for on your way out today. We also receive donations to Riverview United Church and Nine Mile River United Church online under ElmsdaleCooperativeMinistry.com under the donations tab. If you send an email money transfer, which is always accepted, please also send a message to um, our email to let us know who it's for, um, and if you would like a receipt. So when you send an e-transfer, just like when you do it at the bank, it just goes to the bank. And so we don't necessarily know who it's come from. So if you'd like a receipt, please send us that information as well. So in this time, I'm going to ask you to stand, and we will dedicate all of the offerings that have been made and all the offerings that will be made in the name of Christ. Let us say together, Mighty God, who brings life and hope out of death and despair, Help us hear the invitation Christ offered to the disciples. Touch me and see. Make us bold to grab hold of the risen Christ. 
not for this day, but for all of our days. May we offer our gifts this morning not to the church historical, the church that was, but to a church that is becoming, that is still being born, that Christ will bring into the future. May our eyes and ears and hearts continue to hold on to him as we help Christ lead his church forward. In his name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. In our pastoral prayer this morning, you'll hear me sometimes say, Lord, hear our prayer. And when I say, Lord, you'll join me with, hear our prayer. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, the light of your love shines on, illuminating the places where you are present. As the bewildered disciples pondered the stories of your appearance, you penetrated the darkness of their fear and doubt with your word of peace. You showed them the appalling marks of evil pierced on your hands and feet. You opened their minds to understand why you died to defeat evil and death. Increase our understanding, we pray, and open our minds and hearts to receive you. Lord, hear our prayer. Bring to us, O oh God, the sense of your living presence as we go into this new week. Renew in us the faith you want us to have, the faith that is not afraid to reach out in your name and to share the treasure you have given us that treasure which is greater than silver and gold. Lord, you know our hearts. You know our needs, and you know the hearts of those around us and their needs. We lift ourselves and them before you in this time, offering these prayers either in our hearts or said out loud. This day we pray for. Lord, Hear our prayer. Lord, we especially hold before you today our province. Our province as we remember the tragic and violent events that took place a year ago tonight and tomorrow morning. We mourn the loss of 22 people and one unborn child. This year has been marked by so much tragedy. For many of us, that mourning forever changed us. Be with all who are remembering this day and in the days to come. Lord, hear our prayer. We also hold the family and friends of three of our beloved members here at Riverview United Church as we mourn their losses this past month. We remember Marjorie Mailman, Fern Barton, and Ross Horn. Lord, hear our prayer. Finally, O oh Lord, we ask that you would bless us at Riverview United Church and at Nine Mile River United Church with vision for the future and reverence for the past. Guide us each day as we minister to one another and to the world for which you gave yourself. Help us each day to bear witness to your name and do that which you would have us do. We ask all of these prayers said aloud and within the silence of our hearts in the name of Jesus Christ who taught us to pray to you saying our father mother God who art in heaven hallowed be your name your kingdom come your will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us today our daily bread forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil for the kingdom the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. We close our worship with Be Thou My Vision um, before our commissioning and benediction. Please enjoy this beautiful version of this song.
please rise. Let us say together. In the power of the Holy Spirit, we go forth into the world to fulfill our calling as people of God, the body of Christ. Go in peace, love, and care for one another in the name of Christ. May you be blessed by the awareness of God's continual presence and power. May your path each day be lit with God's surrounding and indwelling spirit. May the joy and love and wisdom of the risen and living Christ fill your hearts, heart of your own heart. May Christ be your vision, now and forevermore. Amen. Go now in peace to love and serve the Lord.